All right, this is template A for the evening star. And just a reminder to make sure that your stitch length is set um, smaller. I do mine at about a 1.4. Um, and I have, as you can see, marked my, um, my template. So you'll see that my scraps are a little bit different size. That's because I'm just trying to use up my scraps. So my pieces aren't exactly square. And um, paper piecing pieces are sometimes odd shapes. So it's a great way to use up scraps. Okay, so this is template A, like I said, and you're going to start by turning over so it's the unprinted side. Place your fabric. I'm a little worried. Nope, it's, I was a little bit worried about the salvage, but it should be fine. It's close, we'll see. Um, so make sure that the fabric is facing out. And then we are going to start, this one's a little bit different. We're going to start with 2A. Um, which is the bottom piece. And I am using this painter's canvas by Laura Gunn, which I really like. Okay, so you start, you put your pieces right sides together. You fold your template back to make sure that the fabric will cover the paper and it looks like it will. Take it over to your machine and sew along the line between 1A and 2A. When you are done, simply fold the paper back, leaving a quarter inch seam allowance. Okay. Open that seam up and then you press it. Okay, next you are going to take, let's see, okay, so this is the 3A seam. Um, so between 1A and 3A, you can tell on my fabric for a minute which one was the right side. So you put your right sides together and this looks like it'll be good. So I'm going to take it over to my machine and I am going to sew in between 1A and 3A. Just a reminder that when you do this, you want to sew all the way into the seam allowance. I usually trim mine a little bit better. Sometimes I don't. Um, and then you're going to want to stop right at that point. Awesome. So this is great. I did not do a good job of getting the scraps out of the way. So I'm gonna show you how I unpick. I like to fold it back from the fabric and unpick like that. Just a few stitches at a time. Make sure your seam ripper just kind of gets between the fabric and the paper and cuts a, through a few threads at a time. Look, it's fortuitous. You can tear it all the way off. When you tear off paper, when you're ripping your seam, you need to make sure that you don't just rip it away from the paper because otherwise um, I usually end up printing a new template if I do that. Now, if you rip it away from the paper, it doesn't necessarily mean that the seam has been unpicked. So that's why I unpick it like that. Well, look, learning moment. Okay, so I'm gonna go back and sew that and be more careful next time. We should be good this time. So I'm going to fold back the paper and trim. Now sometimes this angle is okay, right? It's just a triangle, it's not too odd. But sometimes, okay, fold it back, go press that. Okay, sometimes the angles are a little bit more difficult. So what you can also do um, is place everything face down. And you can also fold back this template that should be very close to on the line and you can kind of pre-trim it. Kind of an awkward angle because I'm sitting. And then 
When you go back, you know that you can place this fabric right sides together, right along that line, and you should be good to go. So then stitch between the 1A and 4A lines. I am going to go press this really quickly. Um, I'll be right back. Okay, so with this one, I mean, it's pretty easy to see. This is a triangle. I'm going to fold it back. It should work. If you wanted to, however, you could pre-trim this along the line. Get rid of the scraps so that you don't sew into them. And you know that you stitch just right in that quarter inch seam allowance. Ideally, you should not have to trim this again. But I have difficulty thinking and talking and sewing at the same time. So I am gonna trim this. And as you can see, once this is pressed, then you just have to trim it. There it is. I'm gonna stand up to do this. Oops, that's my sewing machine coming apart. Good times. Um, I like to line up this quarter inch line with this inside line, personal preference, instead of lining the outside of my ruler up with that outer line. I know that the templates are right, but that's just kind of how I do it. Okay, and take off the paper. This one, it's, I think, easiest if you start at the 5A. Kind of pre-perforates that. make sure that the paper is out of the little spaces and there you have it this is the B template for the evening star and your template will have B printed on it this is an old template um, I like to write the names or the color names I think it makes it a little bit easier two paper piece. So we are going to start with, for me, it's the feature fabric and turn your template over. So you're on the non-printed side and you um, place the fabric like this so that the outside of the fabric is here. And if you turn it over, it's the printed side. Next, um, we're going to do 2B. So when you do this, you just sew on, this, on the line in between 1B and 2B, and you'll need to make sure, I need to do this right now, that your stitch length, that you have reduced your stitch length so that it's easier to tear off the paper. And you're going to put the fabrics right side together, and then if you want, you can fold back your paper to make sure that it's going to cover it, and you can see here that it will be fine. So you take it over to your machine, mine is right here, 
need to, my needle was in the wrong position, and then you just sew. Okay, when you are paper piecing, you need to make sure that you sew all the way into this seam allowance. Okay, and then if I wasn't doing a demonstration, I would, well, do this part anyways. First, trim, and then if I wasn't doing a demonstration, I would take this over and press it. But if you get in a pinch, you can finger press it, or I have some of those seam rollers. Those work well too. And then you take your fabric and you do the exact same thing. And you can see that the fabric will cover where the paper is going. So I'm gonna take that over to my machine. You fold back the paper and trim. Um, I really like this ruler. I just bought it at a local quilt shop, um, but it is nine inches long and three inches wide. So it works really well for trimming most paper piecing things. That's not big and unwieldy. And then you take your last rectangle. It's actually a square. Uh, if you can see, it might be kind of hard, but it's really close right here. I don't want to mess with that, so I'm just going to move it down a little bit. Now you can see it's a much better fit. I'm not going to have to worry about unpicking my seam. Gave that a quick iron and as you can see it all looks good if you do have to unpick unpick your paper piecing i find it easiest to kind of pull the paper back a little bit and get under the paper and unpick that way um, this is my favorite seam ripper it's a clover seam ripper but hovel or havel makes a surgical seam ripper that works really well for paper piecing and um, then you just i'm going to stand up and you just, whoops, trim. Um, it's important, as you can see, to make sure that you leave the seam allowance on. Don't cut on that inner line. And then I like to take off my paper now I usually keep a little bowl um, or bin or something right next to my sewing machine when I'm paper piecing to throw all of the scraps in, um, the paper and the other scraps. So you see, there we have it. <laughs>